Before we head into the video, guys, as you know, we're on the road to 1 million subscribers. So if you guys want to help me along that road and you happen to not be subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure you go down below the video right now, press that subscribe button, and press the bell as well. So always notified when I upload a brand new video. Thank you so much for all the support on the channel so far. And I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Love y'all. Yo, what's up, guys? So I haven't done a training pack video in a while, so I decided to do one for today. I'm going to be going over stuff that will help you with your consistency. So these are four packs that were linked to me by my friend Gyro, who used to play for Pittsburgh Knights, but is currently on the team, the Peeps in the RLCS. Very good player, super solid, consistent player all around, so you know this stuff works. And I asked him what kind of training packs he used. He sent me these four codes. I'll put the codes down below in the description, but I'll be going over all four of these packs in this video. And uh, yeah, I'll be going through them quick, but they're all very useful for just consistency in general. And if you practice these packs every single day, I guarantee you your game will improve slowly but for sure it will improve all right so let's get into the first one we'll go over the awkward clears pack which was made by gyro himself so let's get straight into it i haven't played this yet so this will be 100 first time playing it but it's pretty much all trying to read really awkward backward stuff that happens a lot in high level pro play so if you're a player who is low ranked this is something that's good to practice just to get a hold of how to control your car in the air so we're to start off and we'll go through the pack So one tip I will give for those is when it is awkward like that and you are coming from the same direction as the ball is coming from, turn off ball cam for a second and it'll help you kind of get a better idea of where you are behind the ball and it'll help you get a better read on it. That's why that read looks so easy to make the way I jump for that because I can know exactly where the ball is going. This is a tough one, but you got to be patient in a game like this. You got to wait for the first bounce and then you jump. As soon as you kind of read where it's going to end up, you want to jump as soon as you have an idea of where that final bounce is going to make the ball go. So here, these are one of the roll down shots. I like to wait until I have an idea of where it's going. Or if it's a really intense situation and they're coming in quick, I'll go off the top and you can get a counter attack, maybe even a shot out of it, maybe even a pass out of that. So that's a really good way to go for those as well. It's a good thing to try to practice. All right, so for these, it's all about just getting a good read on it. So I like to float a little bit. Floating makes it a lot easier to have time to react to the bounce. That way you're not trying to fully read where the ball is going to end up super quick. Because if you go really quick to this ball, it's a lot harder to read where it's going to end up, right? So I might I might just completely whiff like this if I go super fast or get a bad hit. But if you float, you have an idea of where it's going to go and you can get a good touch. I, I was actually able to pretty much score that ball if that was an actual game. So that's all just being patient and floating. You don't need to go quick to this because most of the time they're going to be waiting on your miss in a situation. So just make sure you float and you'll probably get there first regardless. If someone's going really quick to this, then it's all about speed and you wanna just get any kind of touch on the ball. Like that's fine if someone's going to, cause you're just trying to stop them, right? It all depends on the situation, but you wanna be able to do both. For the next one that's going off back wall, this is really awkward. So in game, if there's no one going, I'll wait for the dribble. If there's no one going for this in game, you wanna just take your time and don't panic. You know, try to get a dribble or get a good pass to your teammate, whatever it may be. Cause you know, if no one's going, you might be able to have a teammate on the left side and you just bang it over to them. And they can get a double tap or something off of that. If you gotta go really quick to this, it's super tough to read. It's coming at such an awkward angle. But there's definitely like a lot of different ways to go about a situation like this. But honestly, in a game, a shot like this is gonna be so hard for them to get a good shot out of this. I would just wait. Wait back here. Their shot's gonna be weak. And you're most likely gonna have an easier clear after the fact. Don't waste a lot of boost for something like this. And if you are, you know, just move out to it and dribble. That's the only only thing I'd recommend doing on a shot like that in game. It's still a good thing to practice going up for it because it's awkward though. This seems like another roll down one. And there we go, we got it off the top. It was super awkward, it's the first time I saw that bounce. And those are always weird to read in game. And they do come that fast. They do happen to come that fast in high level play. So it's just something you have to practice. So for this one, you're in a super awkward spot. You gotta wait for the bounce, but I like to just float on this. Again, the same situation because if you wait too long here, look where the ball bounces out. And I can't really jump for this. Someone's already gonna be up for that and probably score. So as soon as I see it going awkward, I'll float. And I'll have so much time to react to where it's gonna go, right? So just jump float and that helps you read any of these awkward bounces because you're already in the air as long as you know the general direction you can get there but if you wait too long look how long it takes me to get up to this ball and then they're probably going to get there first right so you want to just kind of jump up to the general area you think it's going to go and then you get a touch that's my recommendation for those awkward corner bounces you'll be seeing me do that a lot something like this i don't even know what this bounce is yet i'm going to pre-jump early and i kind of know where it's going to go i know the the general area so I could just keep floating. And in a game, if you do get a really good touch and you have full boost, you can even stay on this ball and get a 50-50, right? I don't have the uh, opportunity to do that in this because it just disappears, but you can see the idea, right? If you're going for a quick clear, that's what I would do. I would take a second, I wouldn't pre-jump it, and I would get the read off the bounce. 
It all depends on the situation again. If you're going for the quick clear, you have to position very different. But if you're going for just a straight up read, then the, the floating technique is very good to make sure you do hit that ball consistently every single time. And it's something you'll see a lot of pro players doing. This is a very awkward one again. I'm gonna float again. I know the general area, hit it to the side. There we go. That's gonna stop any danger for a little bit because it's clear to the corner. Always try to clear this to the corner in the same situation. Super awkward, bounces going off wall to wall, but you wanna just float. And that's the best way to defend that. This is a really awkward one. And um, like even I kind of struggled to deal with that first time seeing it. And again, you don't really want to go for this because look how much panic there is involved in this. I don't see anything that's happening on this this whole side of my screen, right? This whole time. Look at where my ball cam is. I don't see anything that's happening in front of me. They can challenge me at any time during that. And it's probably a goal. So you want to turn off your ball cam, I'd say. That way you can see the field better in that situation. But I wouldn't really go for this again. Same situation as before. Wait for the shot and you can react and get a hit to the side in a game. But it's not bad to practice getting a weird read on this as it is really awkward. And I can't even get a really good hit on this. That's probably the best I, I do in a game in that situation. It's just really awkward. You don't want to have to be jumping for that ball. Like, that's so risky, I feel like, in a game. But it's fun. It's a good thing to practice still. That's going down. And we can take our time on this. I'd go for, like, an air dribble. No one's really going to be super close to this. And if they are, then you, you can go quick and just get a boom. And this is one that, in a game, if you have the time to, try to get a boom to a specific spot of the field. If you see a teammate on the right side, Boom it to the right wall. If you, if you see team on the left side, try to get around it, even though it is hard, and try to boom it over to the left side of the field. That's the best I could have got it, but you know what I mean. That's the whole idea of it. Try to practice getting a good touch. And if there's a, a lot of time and you think there's no threat at all, just dribble. Take your time and make a play forward. Flick over one, maybe. Maybe get a double tap. You know, stuff like that. Just practice that stuff. This is one you have to read really quick off the wall. You have to jump really early for these because the ball is going super fast. So you're just matching the speed of the ball. And predicting how it'll bounce off the back wall it's something that takes time and a lot of experience so it's not something that's gonna come easy you can't really do the floating thing you got to float super far out for this and it's just really hard to read so this is something that i think is better to try to match the the pace of the ball and you can get a much better hit off of it if you do it properly so that's that's my whole recommendation if the ball's going fast straight off the wall straight back off the wall match the speed of the ball this is, this is a really awkward one but the floating technique will prevail in every situation like this because if you just go quick to this, look how hard it is for me to read this. I still got a really good touch somehow, I don't know how. I was supposed to miss that for an example, but going fast to this is almost always gonna be worse because like I pretty much own gold, although I did it on purpose at the end there, I pretty much own gold because I was going too fast to it. So the floating technique is always gonna be better and you can even try to get it over to a specific side. So I could try to get this off to the right side. So obviously this situation is really awkward. You don't ever wanna be positioned like this. So it's something you want to avoid doing altogether, but if you do end up in this position, you want to be able to be comfortable enough and confident enough that you can call to your teammates if you are playing higher level lobbies, that you want to hit this to the right, you want to hit this to the left, that way they know early. Um, so jumping for this and just knowing what you want to do with the ball early is a huge, huge advantage to have over other players. But that one's a really tough, really tough one to practice. Now this one's really awkward and it happens a lot in game. That would have been a double tap to the corner, would have been safe. Um, this is one that you have to just practice because it comes with speed at you and it's a very awkward bounce. These bounces that come skimming in off the off the corners like this are really tough. So that's one you just have to keep practicing over and over again and like you can see me right here, I'm messing it up a couple times. It's, it's a tough one and in game I, I wouldn't want to be in this position because it's just really awkward. You have to jump super quick to it and you're not going to get the best touches, right? So I wouldn't really want to go for this ball unless I absolutely have to. And most of the time someone's not going to be there that quick for this so I can take my time. I'd probably honestly just dribble it in a game because no one's really going to be there. No one's going to be pre-jumping this ball. It's coming in too fast for it to be too threatening. Um, but again, it's a training pack, so you want to practice the, the idea at hand. But again, the positioning that Gyro put the cars in for this training pack, it's purposely awkward. That way you, you get used to being able to save stuff in those positions. You want to be positioned here for this because if you're positioned here, you can react to this so easily. And get a really good clear right but if you're positioned here look how look how much you have to do to get to this ball you have to like break your neck to even have a chance to touch this ball and then it's not going to be a good touch so your positioning has to be a lot better than what this pack shows obviously in high level play but still a really good pack that's the first one we'll go over that's the end of that one so we'll go into shooting consistency this one is 20 shots is the longest pack the next one's 14 and then eight so it's going to be a decently long video but let's get into the second pack, I'll go over these ones really quick. I haven't played any of these, by the way, but they're all pretty basic shots. And my tip for shooting, guys, always try to hit it with the corner of your car. I'll try to just zoom through these ones. 
But always try to hit it with the corner of your car. And don't try to use too much boost. That way, you can follow up another play. If the opponent does save it, you can follow up the next play. So in these packs, I recommend trying to practice, you know, using little as little amount of boost as possible. And, you know, not just going for just straight up shots too. Go for a double tap that I just did right there. Try to hit off the back wall to yourself and just, just see what you can do. You know what I mean? Just practice as many mechanics as possible. Slow down. Pass to yourself off back wall. Go for a shot. Stuff like that. You know, there, there is so much creative stuff you can do in Rocket League. Don't limit yourself to just this. Because in a game, just that is not going to work. Especially against really good players. So slow down. Get a fake in there. Pop it high. You know, do some weird stuff. And just, just practice your mechanics. Just get better at the game. Don't limit yourself to one shot. Don't limit yourself to one simple thing, right? And also throw in, in a pack like this, maybe some passes. Practice like there's someone to your right here. Just get one pass over to the right. Try to pass low. Try to pass it really high. Try to just get a really soft touch to the right. I don't know. Just, just practice different ways to pass. So you have all these things in your arsenal. Just practice like flicking it to the moon or teammate behind you. Give yourself a lot of options, right? Know how to do all these things if you need to do them in game. It's really good, really good, useful stuff to have in your arsenal. Or just be able to shoot it like that. If it's wide open, you know, you want to be able to hit those shots at least 9 out of 10 times. But the whole idea of this one is just to practice shooting. Obviously, that's the, the name of the pack, shooting consistency. So any, any, any way you want to practice that, it's up to you. Any mechanic you want to practice, up to you. But try to imagine scenarios when you're doing these packs. Try to imagine that there's, you know, people around you and you're trying to beat them to the ball, stuff like that. Would have been a good shot. This is a good one to practice for corner double taps. Even though it's probably not what it's intended for at all. But it's a really good one to practice that. This is a really awkward one. So this is... Okay, this is in a scenario that you're trying to rotate out. It gets hit off the back wall. You have to turn around. This is a good one to practice. To be able to, you know, control your car to get that in. I'll jump. It roll the other way. And then just get a flip down. Probably the best way to do this. The most accurate, most consistent way to do this. You could double jump to it and maybe go for like a air dribble or something. If there's someone in goal, I would recommend going for a double and practicing that. Or just like an air dribble or something. Honestly, I, I like practicing, I like using this as like a, a defense situation. This is an awkward situation on defense that's hard to get out of and it'd be good, good one to practice, honestly. Not, not a bad one both ways. To shoot or to, you know, practice defending as well. It's a good shot. So it's coming at you. That's a really hard hit to get on Octane for me sometimes. Because sometimes the, the car will just die. That's a really good one to practice. Getting a good touch on Octane. It's a good shot. So we got to reach this one. I'm guessing it's a cut and then just boom it. You can do whatever you want with that again. If you really want to, you can pretend there's more people here, do a cut, do a cut again, you could fake, fake again, fake it again, and then shoot, I don't know, you could like just pretend there's people. Make a scenario up in your head and act like, you know, you're getting around people, you're going to pass to someone. Like you practice passing like this, fake the first guy, take it to the side, you know, take your time, pretend there's someone middle, and just pop it middle. You know what I mean? Just stuff like that. Just pretend like it's a game scenario and that'll help you be more ready for those scenarios in game even if it is you just making something up in your head, right? That's what I do for these packs anyway. I, I pretend like this scenario is happening in game. What I would do in the situation. That was a really good flick. I don't know why that was so fast. But yeah, this one just seems like a breakaway opportunity with a 101. You just gotta try to be consistent at scoring it. It's a good one to practice. I'll just pop this one high, probably in a game. It'll be awkward for them. And then you probably have a free goal in most scenarios, as, as long as no one's on back wall. But I'm assuming someone's ground here. And they just got a bad touch. So I'll just wait. And you need to jump for these balls. A big thing, like, in game you gotta remember is if they have their ball cam on, it's gonna be really awkward for them when the ball's above their head. Because look at the ball's above my head here. Look what I see. Right? What do I see when it's right above me? Nothing in front of me at all, so... Try to imagine that. That's why turning off ball cam at the right times is very useful. It's a very good thing to know when to do. Yeah, try to imagine that in game. Helps with a lot of situations. 
Like right here, the ball's above their head most of the time. You need to go. You can just wait. And then it'll probably be the same thing as if you went. In most in most cases, it'll be the same thing. Just to redirect the teams. Hit it off back wall and follow it up myself. Or you can practice passing to a teammate. That's a cross. Pat is getting a weird redirect. Following yourself again. But yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do with this pack. Every single shot, you can try to practice it as if it's a different scenario. That's what I like about it. Just take a shot. Bardowski's. Wasn't Bardowski's close. I go for a double. Practice the awkward double reads. Again, passing middle. Yeah, that's a really good, really good pack all around. Just for practicing getting good hits and even just passes across. Every single one of these you can pass instead of shooting. Which is a really good thing to practice. I think it's a underrated skill to practice being able to hit the ball with different corners of your car to pass. We have the flip. Didn't quite get it. I'd probably go for this in a game like this. Hit at the bottom of my car. Try to use my flip to score. And I am messing it up. And that's why you need to practice it. I would like to get this to the point where I could score it like every single time. But I'm messing it up a couple times, right? But that's okay. That's how you improve. I don't know why I'm missing it every time, but you learn by just doing it over and over again. I'm still hitting it the same way every single time. So I'll do it until I score the same way. This is a very scorable shot in game though. Like this is something that can actually really work. Because the uh, defense probably won't expect you to have your flip. I got it there, but I want it better. I'll do it again. There we go. All right, now I could probably get it way more often. That's what I mean. So I, I realized where I was going wrong. I already adjusted where I was going wrong, and now I could do it every single time. So that's the whole idea of these packs, right? You just saw me improve right there. I literally just improved while you guys were watching me, and I just hit the same shot four times in a row. So I messed it up four times, but you saw me literally fix it as I went on and improved as we went. This is a good one. Practice situation where you gotta get around that ball quick. You gotta do a really quick flip here. I just gotta get shot. I think if you flip normal, I don't know if you can get there. It's really tough, but the speed flip helps a lot. There we go. It's a good one to practice. Just the calm, cool, collected finish. Take a shot from mid. You can pretend like someone's there, beat him to it, pass middle. So many different things, all these shots, be creative with it. That's so the whole point of this video, I wanted to just tell you guys. I want to just remind you guys there's so many good packs out there. You know, don't be afraid to look for them, search for them. There's always an updated like browse section with a lot of really good packs and they can help you guys a lot, especially if you use them the right ways. Just use them in ways where you feel like you're actually noticing improvements like that one pack that one shot I just did, I feel like I noticed an improvement right away. I can hit that shot in game, but I wasn't hitting it there for some reason. And then I realized what I was doing wrong. I fixed it. I was hitting it every single time. That's the point of these packs for improvement, right? This is a really good one. This is such an awkward read. Like, that's my first try at it. My second try. This is the same thing as the defensive ones. For any fast backboard read, just float a bit more. You have more time for the ball to come to you, and you have more time to react to the shot itself. How much time I have for the ball to come to me there. I mean, a lot of these octane touches that just aren't going where I think they should be going. There we go. Yeah, the floating thing is super OP for any backboard read. The feathering boost, the floating. That's the whole point of feathering your boost. It helps you float a little bit more instead of going super quick. If I hold my boost the whole time, a lot harder to hit this shot. This is me holding the whole time. I still hit it, but it's way better. You just float way more consistent in game and it'll probably go in way more often that's the last shot of that pack and we'll get into the third of four here that was the longest pack the next ones are going to be pretty short so this one is called <clears throat> this one is called redirect v1 really good basic redirect practice and i'm just going to shoot all of these really quick and um yeah redirects are something that you don't see as much in high level play like these these kind of redirects won't really happen as much in high level play anymore because people cut them out really easily but it's still a good thing to practice your consistency you want to be able to hit it almost every single time and that's a tough one the ball's coming at you fast hard to get power back toward the net good thing to practice this is a good one to go for a double tap this could work in a game still i'd say if you hit it properly this is a zero second double tap i didn't realize 
really awkward, really, really awkward one, especially because I'm going quick as if there's someone challenging me in game. Yeah, that's a good shot. This is a really, really good pack. Okay, I'm trying to go for a weird redirect on this one, but you don't need to. Again, the floating thing is massive with honestly any shot. If you take your time and you float instead of just, you know, rushing it. If I go as quick as possible to the shot, I go harder it is for me to get this. If I'm not, if I'm not stop boosting the whole time, it's so much harder, right? Oh my god, that was actually insane. What the heck? Why do they go so fast? 90 miles per hour skim top corner. No spin at all on the ball. But if you float, you have so much time to react and you can get the shot every single time. So the floating shot is literally the shot for anything aerial based. It's so, it's so good, it's super underrated. People think you need to go as fast as possible all the time. You don't. It's honestly better if you slow down a lot more, more often than not. But yeah, all these are just pretty pretty basic but difficult at the same time high level double taps it's really good practice so even if you are lower rank it'll help you learn a lot i think and um you know even if you can't hit them right away you can hit very variants of what i'm doing you're not going to hit what i'm doing right away but you can definitely hit variants of what i'm trying to do or even just a you know a lower level version of just a shot doesn't matter it doesn't need to be a perfect double tap but slowly get yourself up there and this pack gives you a lot of options. Again, the float there helps me just get around the ball perfectly instead of just boosting the whole time. Look how little boost I use at the end there. I float, float, and I get the perfect shot. I'm just gonna float again. Get up to where the ball is gonna end up, where you think it is, and then just take a shot at the end. That's, that's my way of thinking about it. Elevate yourself to the point where the ball is gonna be at its peak, and then just float. So you can get the, the final hit on the ball. That's the whole idea of nailing like these awkward angle redirects. Obviously you can go as quick as possible too, like this is me just flying as quick as I can. It is way tougher. It's doable, but it's way tougher to get a good angle on it, right? But if you just float, try to aim it, you'll get it in. Much more realistic way to shoot it. This is a really awkward one, it comes right at you weird. Hit out the back wall. Go for a triple. There we go. I didn't mean a ball cam on there. I would go for the flip reset off my car on this. This is a this is such a good opportunity to do this in game. This would work every time too. Like if no one's on back wall for the other team, at this point they're screwed. If you can get the flip right here, they're pretty much screwed. You have so much space to shoot wherever you want to. The only way they're saving this is if they pre-jump perfectly, which is not going to happen in most cases. This is a really good one to practice these uh, double tap flip resets off the wall. Such a difficult mechanic though to get down perfectly. But I've hit some of these in like some pro games and they're literally some of the cleanest shots to hit, I swear. Something that I'm like steadily practicing and trying to get better at. You'll see me doing it a lot. That was a really good angle. But yeah, the zero second timer on this too makes you that extra level of consistent, I feel like, on this stuff once you practice it enough because you're not hitting the ball at the ground. If the ball's bouncing before it goes in, most likely a defender is going to save that. So it makes you that extra bit more consistent. Let's get into the last shot. And it's another double tapable one. I would also go for the, the bottom of the car double on this because you have a lot of time to react to the second hit I feel like if you get the right touch like that's perfect and you have so much time to get a banger on goal so that's something that you have to be positioned perfect for though for it to work all right let's get into the last pack though I think this is one of the the shortest ones yeah this is the shortest one I think eight shots in this one it's called Devo it's just double taps and again you can go with these any way you want but uh the biggest thing about doubles is floating to that first touch to get control and then you can stop boosting for a bit and just float again. So the floating thing is pretty much abusable in any time you're aerialing. Anytime you're aerialing, you can do the float and uh, it'll help you a lot in just getting more accurate with your doubles. You'll see me doing it on every single shot in this pack. 
and how much it helps me be consistent. And I can show you the difference on this shot. I'll go quick the whole time. I'll boost the whole time. Look how much less accurate I am. I'm not going to stop boosting the whole entire time. It's so hard to get the perfect shot on this. And the amount of boost I'm wasting is actually crazy. So if I float, if I take my time, get a good touch, float, and try to actually shoot the second one, you have so much more time to react, so much more time to place your shot. It's actually, it's crazy how much more useful it is to just float and take your time on a shot like this. Instead of just wasting all your boost. You're also saving boost too, which is perfect. You always want to be actively trying to save your boost, right? The only time I'll hold my boost is if I'm too far below the ball. I need to boost to get above it. It's the only situation where I'll actually hold my boost in a spot like this. I'll go for the off the stomach double. I'll try it. I want to get one here. It's a really difficult one to get it off, but... This is a really tough one. I want to I get it perfect. Hold on. I'm going to hit once. There we go. That was good. That was good. That was solid. But the same thing, it's a lot of floating, trying to get the perfect touch. I don't fully boost the entire time, right? It's a lot of just choosing the times to boost, the right times. Oh, I'm going to try to get two out of this. Hold on. I have an idea. I have a really good idea. I don't know if it's going to work, though. It's hard. No, nah, I'm not going to be able to get it. Never mind. I had an idea, but maybe. It's too difficult. More difficult than I think. You don't get a flip sometimes out of that. That's the hard part about it. You don't really know. If you're going to get a flip. Ooh. Okay, that was kind of my idea, but I messed it up. So you float a little slower. One off the back wall. You tap it again. And then you use your flip. That's actually a nuts shot. That would actually be such a good shot. I want to try to get one like that. Look how much I'm floating, though, on a shot like this. It's actually crazy how much I'm floating. To get the perfect hit. Ooh. I don't know if I have a flip. It's so hard to tell if you get a flip out of this. That's it. Alright, there we go. That was decent. You can do a lot more with a different angle on the ball. It was coming in at a different angle. That's really good. You probably beat another defender there by not shooting straight off of that. And you can get a really good far angle shot to the side. Doubles, close. Yeah, that's my favorite shot to go for right now in these packs. Very good thing to practice. Yeah, all these shots, guys, are all really, really good practice. There's none of these shots. None of these shots are bad for you to practice. They're all really good in game. And um, they'll help you a lot, trust me. If you're even a newer player and you don't know how to aerial yet, this will help you just learn how to aerial and just read the, the game in general. You'll start reading bounces earlier than other people because you're practicing them earlier. But yeah, all these links will be in the description, guys. We got one more shot, and then that's going to be it for this video. But yeah, this one is just a very same thing. You're reading the ball simple, and then you just go for the shot. Yeah, floating to a ball like this in-game is so big for getting good control on it. Because you don't want to just throw away the ball right away. So just float, get a good touch off the back wall, take your time, and try to finish off the shot. That's the biggest thing for all of these. Take your time after you get your first touch. You have more time to react to where the ball is going to bounce to. You don't even need to boost after your first touch for a bit. As long as you're on track with the ball, you don't need to boost. Only boost if you're too high above or below it. Those are my biggest tips for double taps. And for this pack in general, because this pack is all double taps. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. It's the last shot of the pack and the last shot of the four. All four packs will be down below in the description. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for 850,000 subscribers. We're only 150k away from 1 mil and it's very doable before the end of the year. So thank you so much for making that a possibility. That would be nuts to finish off 2020. A year that hasn't been good by any means by reaching 1 mil. That would be actually ridiculous to think about. Thank you so much, guys. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night. Whatever time it is you're watching this, like, comment, subscribe. And see you guys all in the next one. I love y'all. Peace.